So this is a video on my pack and go setup. Now I've been doing something like this for about um, 11 years and before pack and go, I've only had this set up for about a year or so, but before this I had uh, metal boxes that stacked on each other and I'll show you a picture of them. So I'll show you this and uh, this is pretty much general uh, mill writing work. Uh, and I like this would cover 90% of it. But the big thing is making sure you know what you have. And then when you're going to do a job, you can bring something extra. So wrenches 7 16 to 15 16 Now um, tape measure, imperial on these, lockout locks, gloves. Got some batteries and lockout hasps in there. Underneath this, I have metric Allen keys adjustable. I don't really get into a whole lot of screwdrivers. I find this. A uh, screwdriver is uh, pretty good, a deburring tool, vernier, and a uh, and it's not a nice vernier, it's just a crappy one, but, and then uh, side cutters. So that's in the top box. I had to put the white thing on here, this white piece of plastic or paper, because it gets so hot in there, because it's in the back of the truck, it gets so hot that it'd heat everything up and melt everything. So that's why everything's loose. And you see, I have everything numbered so people can, uh, when I'm working with someone, I can say it's in box number five. So box number uh, four here, got uh, this Stanley level. I like this because this dot, this swivels. So when you're building handrail or something like that uh, on a staircase, you can swivel that um, little tapping wrench, combination square, good one, vice grips. Uh, uh, utility knife. So, and then these uh, Nipex channel locks in the center punch. So below that tray, I have a dead blow, a sheet metal hammer, some different style vice grips, uh, universal metal shears, and then a smaller uh, little universal bit. I don't really get into hammering much of stuff, so I don't really have big hammers. If I was going to a job, usually I'd throw a sludge hammer in there, but, but with those hammers, sometimes they're a bit underpowered, but I find the weight, uh, sometimes I don't bother bringing uh, I don't have big hammers, but usually everyone, other sites and every job, someone's got a huge hammer. So in box three, I got another set of gloves, ratchet straps, some more. This is just a flow, overflow, just some lockout locks when I'm working with people. In this box, um, wedges, feeler gauges, uh, spud wrench, larger adjustable wrench, uh, chalk line. And then under this, got a puller, some punches, uh, a striker, snap ring pliers, inside and outside, and then lineman's pliers. Now under that, uh, this is a multimeter uh, quarter inch socket set. Um, these are my metric wrenches. I don't use those a whole lot. These are some tungsten bits and uh, um, some weirder things. Longer peeler gauges. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, a micrometer if I need one, but this stuff usually doesn't get used very often. So in that aluminum box, I have a multimeter wire stripper. So that's been pretty good. And all this is pretty much shimmed up level. So I only carry a quarter inch drive ratchet set here. Now I've had this probably for 10 years, but um, it's been pretty good. So, and I'll explain that in a second. So right here, this is a new thing. And I kind of like this because when all my stuff's put together, the stuff I'm using the most is inside that and in here. So in here, this is kind of, I have, this is the best socket set you can get for mill writing. So this is a socket set. And I think when they stopped making these, I bought every one that they had at the uh, one Ackland's Granger branch. But what it is, it's a metric and imperial socket set. So it'll go from uh, 10 millimeter, uh, three eight all the way up to uh, inch and a quarter half inch drive and then one thing I did here was I welded a, uh, a socket on the end of this Johnson bar this breaker bar and so that ex essentially becomes a really long extension if you need to so I don't carry a three eight drive I think it's a waste of time this is the best socket set I found um, if I don't use deep sockets if it's deep sockets you know use a wrench but um, this is by far the best socket set, and I probably had this for uh, over 10 or 12 years. I'm broken sockets, the chrome chips on it, whatever, but um, like I said, this is all about carrying the least amount of tools as possible. And when you can go to 10 mil to inch and a quarter, 
uh, you know, in 22 pieces, you're not going to get any better than that. Whatever, any other place is going to put it in like 400 piece set and it's going to weigh a million pounds. So that's in there. This thing kind of barely fits in there. It's kind of tricky to close. But then down here, I have taps, Imperial taps and die, uh, just tap set, drill and tap set, Imperial drills, have a half inch drive uh, impact, a drill and a charger. So, you know, when I'm, when this is all put together, I can use my wrenches and my driver and my drill in there and it works, uh, works really well. So I like this, this is a pretty good system. So lastly, in this box, um, I have some Allen keys. This is just a catch all again, some emery cloth. I got, this is a file. This is another good tool is a file and you, um, braze or weld a carbide insert. And this becomes a really good scraper. It's really, uh, really sharp, a headlamp for a hard hat, some grinding disc pliers, um, you know, this pry bar. I'm not, I'm not into really big hammering stuff and another ratchet strap, but, uh, that's usually, uh, a good uh when when my when my um allen keys i think these go from whatever three sixteenths to three quarter then in the bottom this box is for stainless steel like i do a bit of stainless steel stuff um it's got emery um some scotch bright wire brushes so that's in there a laser uh a corded grinder i think i've had this grinder it's a bit underpowered but probably 15 years so it's it's been lit on fire on the back, a torch lit on fire, but it's been pretty good. Um, a cordless grinder, that's kind of the standard now. And when I get into something, I'll use that. Um, some grinding discs. Uh, I got a, uh, this thing. So just a uh, driver with bit leashes there. And then a um, uh, die grinder. So, and then this has some weirder, weirder things like, um, uh, right angle screwdrivers and stuff like that little ones, but um, that's pretty much the most of it And like I said over the years This is what I found works. Usually I don't have a hammer drill in here, but I got it in there um, Some piped open. There's a there's a 24 inch or an 18 inch pipe wrench in here. So this is uh, Like I said this I feel pretty confident doing a lot of things with this and anything else I just throw extra in the truck, but when people uh, come for a job or they come on site and you know they have a little bag you kind of get an idea when people are serious and they understand what's going on but over the years this is what i carry and uh, i'm pretty confident going to a job with this and uh, having pretty much 90 percent of what i have and uh, if i don't i can figure it out so these are what i had up until probably two years ago and i had four of these on a cart with solid wheels because I worked at some tire places and they'd blow, um, blow some tires up, um, the pneumatic tires. And you can see I machined and put these uh, plates on there so it'd stack all together. And you see all the, all the hinges and all this stuff's all blown up because I don't know how many times apprentices would go and uh, like I said, there'd be four of these on there and apprentice would go and tilt the cart back and the things would just all fly forward. So, I mean, uh, the, 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 the new ones are way better. I don't have that issue with them clipping together and, and I never left these in my truck really. And if they did, they just, everything got soaked. So this is it pretty much set up. I flipped that other one around so you can't get the, um, can't get the, uh, that box open. Um, but I got a, uh, cable that goes through there and locks it. I just lock it in my truck and then I'll ratchet strap it in. But, uh, usually that's how it is. And, um, I mean, it gives someone a perspective on what you're going to need for mobile service and you can still wheel it into a factory where you're not, everything's not in a truck and you can't, uh, you can't have it mobile.